We're often told to film using a log profile, but do we always have to? Cameras include lots of preset picture profiles for us to use. So in this video, I wanna find out if we can get a professional looking image without using log. What are the differences between standard picture profiles and log and the benefits and limitations of both to make sure that we get the best image possible. So by the time you finish watching this video, you'll know exactly when to use log or a standard picture profile. And ultimately you'll have a color grading process and results just like the pros. Now I'm using the Lumix S5 Mark II X camera, but I'm keeping this video very generic and universal so whatever camera you have the principles are going to be pretty much the same these are the standard picture profiles think of them as instagram filters they already have a style and color and contrast applied to your video as you capture it so the image is pleasing and usable without any editing this is great for beginners or people that don't want to spend a load of time color grading and just want to film a video and upload it very quickly but the problem is if you want to alter how it looks you're very limited now, i'm going to tell you why and show you some examples in a bit. Now a log profile doesn't have a preset colour and contrast already applied so it looks very flat and grey. This is because it captures more information and dynamic range so you can alter the contrast, the saturation and even the colours to make it look just the way you want it. Now you can't just jump into editing log footage by adjusting the contrast and saturation, it won't work. You have to add what's called a conversion LUT first before you start doing anything. Now I've put a link in the description to the ones that I use, I highly recommend them. It's super easy so don't be put off by this explanation. All it is is a case of drag and drop onto your footage and that's it. And then you can start your color grading process. So the downfall of using log is that color grading is a skill. If you haven't done it before, it can be quite daunting. But throughout this video, I'm gonna drop some hints of how to do it and it can be quite time consuming. So you'd think if you want a faster workflow, use a standard picture profile. If you want more flexibility and control over your colors, use a log profile, right? Well. It's not that straightforward, unfortunately. Look at these two images. The standard picture profile on the left has much higher contrast. The dark parts of the image look really dark and the bright parts are very bright. Where the sun's hitting Danny Boy's face, it's way too bright and white and there's no detail. You also can't see any detail in the shadows of his coat or in the trees in the background. Now, if I was to expose this slightly darker to retain information in the highlights, I would lose even more detail in the shadows and some areas would be way too dark. But the log image on the right looks more even. There's more detail in the trees and the face isn't blown out anymore. You can see all the color in the skin tones without it looking completely white. This is because log has more dynamic range, as I mentioned earlier. And this extra detail leads to a more professional image because once upon a time only expensive cinema cameras were capable of capturing so much dynamic range. If in post I want to raise the shadows slightly so you can see more detail, you can. And the same goes for lowering the highlights. But with a standard picture profile, the image is pretty much what it is and there isn't much movement with the contrast. As you can see, if I tried to bring up the shadows, everything just turns gray without adding the detail. Also, having to grade a standard picture profile goes completely against the point of keeping things simple in the first place. We don't want to touch any editing. Uh, now, in fairness, this is a high contrast scene where there's a bright sky and then shady areas. So in these high contrasty environments with a standard picture profile, you have to expose perfectly but even then it's still difficult to get a pleasing and natural looking image because the differences between the lights and the darks are so drastic and it's hard for the camera to capture both so that's why I recommend in these instances to use a log profile so tricky if I was exposing on vlog that's what I'd get my face exposure to look like but I'm guessing that everything else is gonna be way too dark then this is vlog exposing in the same way should see the more detail in the shadowy areas. Now on a less bright day or in less contrasty environments the standard picture profiles are a lot better so it's much easier to expose and you might find that using them on overcast days or using controlled lighting scenarios will work really well. What do you think Danny boy? Just have to go to plus two stops maybe plus three and just hope for the best. <laughs> you don't in fact, that's a good that's a good point actually because I did a video about exposing, which you can see up here, and a lot of people say overexpose by two stops or more sometimes, and it just doesn't work for everything. If you did that on a day like this, 
I mean, it looked like that and it's just not very nice. You lose all your colour, all your contrast and it's harder to colour grade. So I don't recommend it for all, every scenario. With 10-bit log footage, you can actually change the hue of the colours without making the image look blotchy and strange like 8-bit used to. For example, you can make this green grass look more yellow like it's autumn and make the blue sky look more teal and give things a little bit more of a style. But can you do that with the standard picture profiles? I wanted to find out. Well. I mean, uh, the answer is yes. It's as simple as that, really. <laughs> because it's 10-bit footage, you've got that flexibility of being able to stretch the colors more than you do on 8-bit. Where things get difficult with standard profiles is just the contrast. You don't have much flexibility there. The other thing I wanted to test was to see if the standard picture profiles were smaller file sizes so that a benefit could be saving space if you had a small memory card or if you didn't have much space left on your hard drives. I tested a minute clip and the file sizes are exactly the same because it's still 10 bit it's just the overall look that's different so there's not really any benefits there i've always used log for a long time just purely for dynamic range i always end up losing detail if you what about though someone who's just starting out and they're not comfortable with color grading cards on the table i never use log until i got my a7s3 and maybe a year after getting my a7s3 because shooting in log i never got the image i actually wanted out of it I could never get it right. Because of experience. Because of experience grading. with color grading there and not understanding how to convert it. So yeah, it was really daunting. However, once I'd learned how to expose log footage properly and then understanding how to use conversion LUTs to take it from log footage to Rec. 709, it became a lot easier. So when you put in a sequence of clips together, the exposure is different for every shot based on the angles, the environment, and what's in the frame. So even though you may have exposed correctly for each shot, you still need to tweak the exposure and the colors in post so that every clip matches up and isn't distracting for the viewer. And that means that even if you don't want to fully color grade, you still have to make some adjustments in post afterwards. So in that case, is it just worth filming in a log profile anyway? Now this is what I would do. Either use one of the flat picture profiles or a like 709 picture profile, which appear to have more dynamic range and less contrast. Then just add your saturation and your contrast afterwards in post. Now this is the simplest form of color grading because half the work's been done for you. Or film in log profile and just apply a rec 709 LUT on and then just make your adjustments after that point point. and really you're only adding one more step to the process just a drag and drop and I think that's worth it and the thing is color grading doesn't have to be as complex as it sounds and I myself like to keep things super simple and crack on with it really I like to work as quick as possible and I'm not very technical so if you want to take your videos to the next level and you're thinking about maybe giving log footage a try but you've never experimented with color grading then I have a full color grading workshop where I show you my simple three-step process for color grading so you get consistent results every time but more importantly it shows you the things to do before pressing record and get the best chances of getting the image and colors you always wanted. There's two things I've found, right? On one hand, if you use log, you need to know how to color grade and beginners aren't gonna be comfortable with that. But at the same time, if you use log, it's easier to expose because you can get away with it a little bit. If you overexpose slightly, you can pull some of the detail back. Whereas on a standard picture profile, you've got to nail the exposure. Otherwise, your contrast is just gone. So it's a trick, isn't it? So either one, takes some learning. By gaining one thing, you're actually losing another. With that in mind, I mean, I would choose log footage all day long because you've got that extra flexibility. Can, can you use the standard picture profiles at all? Of course you can, but some are better than others, so definitely try the ones in your camera and see which one's your favorite. And some of them work better or worse depending on what environment you're in. And as I mentioned earlier, this is only one piece of the puzzle when it comes to videography and getting a good image. If you really want to take your videos to the next level and blow your viewers away, you have to think about doing something else before you even press record because without it, you'll never be able to get the image you truly want and you'll spend even longer trying to fix things. And that's why you should watch this video next because it's gonna take what you already know and make it 10 times more powerful.